Hey guys, it's Leo with Dreaming Tree, and in this video, we're gonna to put together our spectacular orchid um, card box. And um, this is perfect for uh, a wedding, actually. That was the original intent, but you guys have chimed in with so many other ideas and so many other ways to use this piece um, that it's kind of made me th rethink the way that um, I view some of the stuff that even we put out. So um, this is probably an intermediate project. Um, it's not difficult, it's just um, this is something that is gonna take a little bit of time. Um, nothing crazy, because we've done a lot of labeling for you and sorting, so it's just, um, you, you may want to kind of put aside a couple hours um, for the actual assembly, uh, but it's very easy. I'm gonna walk you through every single step of the process, and um, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the actual base is made up of, we, we got some actual foam core, okay? And you want to take this and cut it to 11 by nine. Okay, you want two pieces. And then we're gonna take the two pieces and glue them together. You can use regular glue, depending on the type of foam core you have, or you can use some spray glue. It doesn't really matter, but definitely, um, Give these pieces enough time to set, okay? And do your best to cut them evenly. Okay, make sure that you've got 11 by nine exactly, okay? And we kind of, to save paper, we did this in a way that will do exactly that. Okay, so we have these four pieces here, okay? And all you wanna do is you want to fold these, okay? And what I did when I was putting mine together was I just sort of aligned everything like that, okay? And I actually folded these tabs and glued those um, after I got everything set. So we're gonna go ahead and get these pieces folded. Okay, and bend our tab in. And that tab is gonna go under this one. Okay, just like that. All right, and I'm not gluing anything just yet. And I'm gonna get this piece ready. And get that tab bent. Okay, so that's gonna go under here like that. Okay, and then this piece is gonna go on that last side there. Okay, just like that. Now, we're not covering this area here because the bottom box is gonna do that for us. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here just to get this tab in place. I'm just gonna hold that. In place, make sure that we have it exactly where we need it. So we have a nice corner there. Okay, so just make sure that you've got that glued into place and give that, give that a few seconds to dry. Okay, now as we're getting that in place, you can go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue under this tab here. Now again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm just putting glue on that tab and I'm gonna fold that over onto the poster board. And we have the exact width that you're gonna need in the, um, in the PDF, okay? So now I'm gonna head on over to this side here and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right there because I wanna get this tab in place here. Okay, so let's just push that down, get a nice corner there. Make sure that that's nice and flush. And even if you don't cut this perfectly, I actually used a box cutter, had a brand new blade in there too. And um, the second one that I cut 
cut a lot better. So make sure you have a nice sharp blade. Okay, so give that a second to dry. I'm gonna lift this up and we're just gonna put some glue on this piece here and fold that over. Okay. And now you can actually go ahead and put some glue on this piece here and fold that over as well. Okay, so let's flip that over, flip that around, I should say. And I'm gonna go ahead and you can just pop that little tab in there, throw a little bit of glue on there. Maybe just flatten it out a little bit so it doesn't get all globby. And pop that in there. Make sure you've got it nice and aligned. Just hold that while it dries. And then you can actually go on the other side here. There's that one little tab left. Just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on there. Okay. We're gonna close that off. And just hold that in place while it dries. Okay. Give that a second. And then we're gonna go ahead and just put glue. You can put glue here, doesn't matter. And we're gonna close that off. Okay, and again, we're gonna have a box sitting on top of this. So the idea is just to make sure that the outer edge is nice and covered. Okay, and then we can go ahead and what you wanna do is just start, start on one side and then do the opposite side. Okay, so we'll do this side here. Just fold that into place, hold that down. Okay, and then close it up completely. I'm just putting glue on these sections here. Okay, and you've got your little base. And again, this is gonna be covered up with a box. So that is your base. I'm gonna put that off to the side for now. And we can go ahead and begin. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin with the topmost box. Now this box is completely independent and does stand on its own, okay? And you'll notice that we have some labels on here. I've gone ahead and penciled them in so you can see them. We have TL for top lid and TB for top base. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and actually what I did uh, before I actually constructed the box, because I, I like working with things that are flat, um, just because it's a lot easier. What you wanna do is take a look at the, well, you're gonna have a set of four and four pieces like this. And these I've actually embossed, okay? So where these go is actually right here, okay? And I'll show you, show you what I mean here. Let me show you the final version of the box here so that you can get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So here's the final box, okay? So we've got embossed panels here with the little faux ribbon here, okay? So you, can't, you see little score marks on here that indicate where the ribbon goes, and then you're gonna put the embossing, full, uh, the embossing pieces um, just to either side, okay? So, um, you're going to have a series of pieces that look like this. What you're looking for is the ones without the score marks that fit the height of this piece. Okay, so I've got that there, and I've got that there. And there's going to be some taller ones for the taller, taller boxes. And you can just kind of arrange those by size so that you have them ready as you prepare this piece. Okay. And that is right. Okay, great. So what I did, and I'm gonna go ahead and cheat here, and I am just going to, for the sake of time, 
I'm going to use a tape gun. You can glue or you can use a tape gun, whatever you prefer. Just get that nice and centered and make sure that you have it above the score line or just on the score line. It may um, come up a little bit higher than the top of this, but that is actually by design. Okay, so you want it pretty much on the score mark. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my tape gun going here. And right about there is perfect. Okay. Just get that into place. And like I said, I, I really thought that working with all these pieces flat makes it a lot easier to be precise because you're, you're able to apply the pressure that you need. Okay, and so at this point, you're gonna grab your embossed pieces, and I did emboss all these, okay? And you're going to arrange them like so. I'll show you here in a second. So this piece is gonna go here, this piece is gonna go here, this piece goes here, and this piece goes here. And then the wider ones are gonna go here, here, and these last two I actually did not emboss, but you get the idea, okay? And do your best to keep uh, a nice even border all the way around, okay? And you just wanna go ahead and get those glued into place. So I'm just gonna do a couple here so that you know what it looks like. And again, I do recommend that you glue these, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just using my tape runner speed things up because I the way that I envision you guys using these videos is just kind of watching it once and then just going to town and doing it yourself okay so again just pretend that these panels are on there just like I put these on okay and once you have that together you can go ahead and put these side by side and again just make sure that you fold all the parts at the score marks. It's easier to do that now, okay? And we're just gonna connect these two pieces together to form one long piece. Okay, and I need a little bit more glue there. There we go. And I'm just using my table here. And just pushing that down making sure that it's nice and lined up. I'm going to push these down here. I'm going to flip this over on itself to ensure that I've got it nice and lined up. And I do. Okay. So we're going to fold these over. I'm going to close this box up. I'm just going to put glue right there and get it out to the edge. So that closes up nicely. Okay. So that looks great. And at this point, you can go ahead and close the box up. Okay, that is for that's the liner. Okay. So I'm gonna grab this piece, and what I like to do is start with one side. I'm gonna flip this up a little bit and just take and smear that glue out to the edge there. Okay, get that aligned and let it partially set for just a few seconds. And then you can go ahead and put it down on your table. Okay, and at this point, and go ahead and put glue on these tabs here. And then again, I want to make a nice clean seam. So I'm going to run some glue out to the edge. Okay, and just close that up. And then once it partially sets, you can go ahead and flip it over and just 
push down. And actually see the tape, the tape runner on these would not recommend it. Again, I'm just kind of using it to save some time here, but you do want to glue everything down on this piece, especially because you need it to withstand a special day and you don't want little parts just coming off. Okay, so that is the base of the box, um, very simple. And there's actually a liner that you can glue to the inside to reinforce the bottom. So you can go ahead and get that glued into place. Um, so that is the bottom of that. Now we have the actual lid for that box. And basically what we're gonna be doing is repeating this process a few times, okay? And before we, before we close this up, we want to join these two long strips together like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on this tab here, just like that. And get that joined up with its neighbor. Just push down, give it a few seconds to get its initial hold. And I just like to flip it on top of itself. Just kind of run my finger here to make sure that I've got it nice and aligned. Okay. And then we can go ahead and put some glue on this tab. And get that closed up. Oops. There we go. Just like that. I'm gonna clean this thing off. Okay, now um, the way that we designed the lid, there's some reinforcement parts to it. Okay, that's these pieces here. Okay, so you're gonna fold those in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on this piece here and just I actually want to get some glue out to the edge too. Okay, and just push and fold that down. And that's gonna create a nice thicker lid. So you can see in there, just kind of gluing it to itself. And then I can move over to this side. And I'm gonna put glue right on this little tab here. And just push that over onto itself. And just hold it down until it stays. Okay. All right. And we're just going to repeat that process a few more times until we get all four sides glued down. Okay. All right. So we've got a nice, so we've got a nice reinforced lid. And what we're gonna do at this point is bring these down, okay? And now the top of this is this piece here with a series of little score marks on it. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna glue one side down. Okay, and again, I wanna get glue out to the edge there. And get that aligned. Give it a few seconds to initially set. Okay, and then we can flip it down and push down like that. Okay, beautiful. And then we can go ahead and close it up. Get a nice line of glue in the middle. And then if you kind of overdid it a little bit, I, like I said, I've been using my finger a lot because I feel like it just gives me more control and the end result always looks better because I'm able to get that glue out to the edges there where that fine tip, even though it's fine, still just doesn't give me the control that I want. So it's okay if we get a little messy. Okay, so go ahead and close that up. Let it set initially and flip it over and push from the inside. There we go. Okay, so now, a fun part here. 
we're going to put the little top part on here and that's made up of this piece here. Okay, so you wanna go ahead and grab this piece, fold it the score marks here and get it somewhat aligned. Okay, and the way I did this was I actually flipped it over and I just put glue. Well, actually, that's not how I did it. I put glue on this part first. Just to make sure that this sits properly. So you just want to make sure that you get it in between those little score marks there. And those are going to be covered up by the bow. So even if they're showing through a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Okay, and we do actually have a liner piece that you want to go ahead and glue in there just to kind of give it a little reinforcement. Okay, but anyway, what I did was I just took, once I had that glued down, I just started gluing one of these at a time. So I'd get it up there and just kind of push it down like so. And then just move over to the next one. Okay. Just like that. And again, with these, make sure that you're getting glue out to the edge so that you don't have one little section kind of peeling off or pulling up because that's going to take away from the overall aesthetic. And you want this thing to be as pretty as possible. Okay. Close that up. Okay. All right. So we've got our lid. We've got the base. And again, this box can actually make separately. We do have a version of this in the extras folder that you can make without having to make the rest of the box. Okay. Now what we're going to do is put together our bow. And the bow, you want to find all the pieces that have the letter B cut into them. Okay, those are, these are all the pieces that are going to make up our little bow. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. Okay, so the first part of this is getting the little tails. Okay, so grab the ones with the round tops here. Okay, we'll put the actual bow together here in just a second. And what you want to do is kind of take these and um, put them between your finger and just kind of train them to kind of bend them. Okay, and what we did and I'm just going to go ahead and just get this first one set. Just kind of get them in the center there. There's no rhyme or reason to this. You can make the you can make the tails longer or shorter, and that's up to you. Okay. But the idea is to kind of train these so that a few of them are kind of trained down, um, a few of them are trained up. Okay. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to train these guys up so they curl up. Okay. Just like that. You can take um, you take a pencil or a Sharpie or whatever if you want to add more curl, okay, or less curl. It's up to you. Go ahead and put some glue on there and just try to center it as best as you can. And just hold that down until it sets, okay. Grab the next one and let me grab my Sharpie. Just like that. Maybe it's a little too much. Okay, throw a little glue on there and just aim it out to the corner of the box. Okay, and hold that down until it's nice and dry. Okay, and grab the final one, train it, add your little glue and get that nice and center there. Okay, you can, like I said, you can bring it out further. You can bring it and center it more. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. And I, these things might actually be trained a little bit too much for my liking, but once we get the bow in there, it's going to look really cool. So, all right, let's take a look at the actual construction of the bow. Okay, so first thing you want to do is find a little square piece like that, okay? And what we're going to do 
So we're going to take these four pieces that look like this, okay? And what you want to do is you want your, if you're using AC cardstock, you want your texture side out, okay? So I'm just going to train this um, slightly just to kind of give it a curve like that. And I'm going to put glue on the texture side. And the idea is to just kind of get that glued down to the square so that it's flush with the score mark there. Okay. And give that a few seconds to dry. And then what we're going to do is just glue that to itself so that we have something like this. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to put glue right there and just get that in place and hold it while it dries. Now you can kind of push this in if you want to make it a little more full. It's completely up to you. And we're just going to repeat that process a few more times here. And I'm just kind of training this to give it a natural curve. If we don't do that and you try to bend it, you may crease it and that's not going to look like a bow. So I'm going to go ahead and just put glue in this little area here and just line this piece up like so. Bring it down a little bit. There we go. And just push that and hold it down. And put a little glue there. Might have went a little bit too crazy there. And get that glued into place. Okay. And then as you're kind of holding it and setting it or waiting for it to set, you can kind of fluff it and push it around until you get the look that you want. So again, this is very repetitive, but I want to show you this because it's the bow I think is one of the coolest pieces or coolest parts of this, of this cake. It really makes everything stand out. So we got to get it right. Okay, so get that in place, throw a little glue, and just glue that right on top of itself. Make sure it's nice and centered, and then you can kind of push that in. Just make sure that it's looking the way you want it. Okay, and the last one. Go ahead and train it. Add your glue to this little spot here. Okay. And then again, just a little dab of glue right there. Bring this piece around and over and kind of fluff and shape. Okay, so that's that. Then we have these two pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and bend this on the score mark. And again, we do want to train this and grab your Sharpie for this one or whatever you want to use. Get that trained. And then you're just going to glue that to the little tabbed area. Okay. Just hold that maybe down against your table. Let it set first. And then just push down and hold it down for a second. Okay, and again, kind of want to shape this and make sure that, there we go, that looks about right. And we'll do the same thing with this piece here. Go ahead and train that. Okay. Just like that. Give it a few, a few seconds to set, and then again, just kind of moving it around to shape it the way I want. So the next thing to do is for the larger loop here, I'm just going to put a, a, a dab of glue in the center on the bottom. Okay. Then we're going to take this piece and we're going to stick it inside. Try to center it, and then maybe grab a pen or something and just kind of push down and hold it in place so that it sets on that little dab of glue that we added in there. Okay, give that a second to dry. 
and then you can go ahead and shape it how you want. Okay, that looks good. And then we can go ahead and put glue in the center of this and take this whole piece and glue it down like so. Okay, so there's our bow. And then we can go ahead and glue that down to our box here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a generous coat of glue right there in the center. Make sure that you have it nice and aligned and just push down and hold that down until it gets a nice hold. Okay, so there you go. There's your box. Of course, it does look a lot better with the embossing. Uh, there's your box and your ribbon. So that is the top tier of your cake. So there you have the top tier of the cake, complete with the bow. So we have that and the base complete at this point. Um, all that's really left is to assemble the next two tiers and then some flowers, and we're pretty much done with this thing. So let's move on to the middle tier, and that is right here. Okay, and okay, and you want to go ahead and separate these pieces by the indicators that are drawn or actually scored into your project. You have the middle base and then the middle lid. Okay, so ML and MB. And then we have this piece here because this is where the cards are going to slide through. Okay, now before we assemble the actual structure of this box, um, we created three of these pieces because we wanted this to be very sturdy, okay? Otherwise, it may tend to bow in a little bit. And also, I highly recommend that you use a spray adhesive to get all three of these layers glued on top of each other. And also, once you actually apply the glue and all three layers, are sticking together, I would put this inside of a book and keep it flat and leave it flat and let it set for maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes just to make sure that this is a really nice stiff piece, okay? So you do wanna get all three of these glued together, okay? And again, you can do a spray, I would recommend a spray adhesive, okay? Now once you have that, and of course I'm not gonna show you that, but you go ahead and do that. Um, we can go ahead and assemble the base of our box. Now, before we do that, let me go ahead and let's get the main structure here assembled. And then just like we did with that first tier, while we have it flat, I am going to go ahead and put the little faux ribbons on as well as the embossed panels. Okay, so you do want to alternate this when you're building it. You want to go long, short, long, short. Otherwise, you're going to have a weird looking box. Okay, so we want to go ahead and get that glued to its neighbor. Just like that. And just hold that down. Make sure that it dries nicely. Just folding it over to make sure that I've got it aligned properly. Okay. And let's take the long piece here. Whoops. And get our glue down. Get that smeared out to the edge there. And just get that in place. Okay, and one more piece here. Close off the four-sided box. Get those in there. Get that nice and aligned. Okay, and again, just like we did with that first tier, I don't need to show you this because I've already shown you this but you wanna go ahead and grab the little faux ribbon pieces. Make sure you've got the right height, okay? So those are gonna get glued right between those score marks, 
Okay, you can see the two little score marks. Just get those glued right in between there. Okay, and then you want to go ahead and grab your embossed pieces, which I have here. And you're going to have shorter ones on the shorter side. There's going to be an even border that goes around. Okay, so you want to get those glued into, into place. Okay, and then you have the longer sides, or the wider sides, and you want to get those glued into place. Okay, so those are your panels and your little faux ribbons. So get those all glued into place, and then you can go ahead and close off the box. I'm not going to do that because I kind of already showed you that last time around. Okay, so this is the this is the base of the box. Now this one doesn't actually have a bottom, okay? Because when the cards fall through the slot, we want them to go into the bottommost layer. So this one does not have a bottom, and that is by design. Okay, so let's go ahead and close up this box. Getting that glue out there to the edge. Okay. And fold it over on itself. And it should sit nice and flat. Okay, great. All right, so that is the base of the middle box. Okay, and again, yours is going to have the ribbon and the embossing portions on there already. So I'm going to put that off to the side for now, and we can go ahead and put together the lid. Okay, and let's go ahead and what we want to do is we want to fold everything as usual. Okay. And you want to go short, long, short, long, so that we have a nice rectangular box. Let's just make sure you get everything folded. And also, this tab here, we have um, the actual slot cut out of it, because otherwise we would prevent the cards from going down the slot. Okay, so we just need to glue these pieces together. Okay. Just like that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue assembling the lid for the middle part of our box. Okay. And get this last piece on here. Okay, so we can go ahead and close this up completely now. And I'm just going to put glue on this tab here. Get that closed up. Okay. And just like we did with the lid for the top part, okay, we are going to put glue on these pieces here because these get glued onto themselves to kind of just reinforce and make our lid that much stronger. So just want to go ahead and glue that down. Hopefully you can see that there. There you go. Just like that. You can turn this over there. that like that. Okay. Okay. 
And the last one here. Definitely makes the lid a lot sturdier. Okay, great. So, got that in place. Now, I can go ahead and, now this is where this piece here, I'm just gonna use the one layer. Yours is gonna be glued together. It's gonna be three solid pieces, okay? So again, use spray glue for that because otherwise it's probably gonna look kind of warped on top with the three layers. So the spray glue is very helpful in this situation. And I'm gonna go ahead and begin by gluing this part first. Okay, so we wanna get this anchored and get the glue out to the edges there. Okay, and just line that that bottom part first, make sure that that is where it needs to be. Give it just a few seconds to set and then you can flip it over and push down from the inside to get that to hold. Okay, so that looks great. And then we can go ahead and close this up. So you wanna put glue on all these tabs here and again, I always like to get a little bit of glue out to the edges there and just close that off. Just make sure that it's nice and aligned on all the sides. Okay, and then you can push that down from the inside to finish it off. Okay, so there's the base, there's the lid. Okay. okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this piece here, okay, and you just wanna fold at the score marks, and this is gonna go down like this, okay? And just kinda run your finger along the back here, make sure that that's flush. This should be perfectly flush with where that hole opens up. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and put glue on this. Okay, and again, just get that nice and centered. And I'm gonna actually pop the lid off of this and put it face down. Make sure that that gets a good grip. And then just like we did with the topmost layer, I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on these parts here and just push down to get those in place. Okay, just like that. Okay, so our second tier is pretty much done. Okay, and where is our first tier? There's our first tier. Now again, this top tier, we're not actually gluing that to this tier. That's gonna remain separate because you can put a gift inside of it. So um, really no need to glue that down. You can if you want, that's completely up to you. Okay, so the second tier is done. And at this point, we just need to put together the bottom tier. And the process is pretty much the same. Okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead and grab these pieces and get them out of the way. We can put together, let's put together the base first. Oh, and actually, I forgot to mention one thing here. On this guy here, we have this one piece that looks like this, okay? And that is this piece here. second here. Oh, I got some. This piece gets glued right here to finish off that little full ribbon look. 
okay? So you wanna just get your finger in there, make sure that that sets and get that glued into place. Okay, so that is for just to kind of finish off that little ribbon piece. Forgot to mention that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put together the bottom base. And again, uh, this is pretty redundant. Okay, but we're gonna go ahead and put it together so that you guys can be sure to know exactly what you're doing all the way through the process. Okay, so I'm just folding everything at the score marks and getting everything situated and aligned. Okay, and again, we're just gonna go ahead and get this glued to its neighbor. And I'm gonna take that glue and spread it out to the edge there. Okay. And you also, again, want to alternate long, short, long, short, or short, long, short, long, so that you get the correct looking rectangular box. Okay. All right, so this is a long piece. So I'm gonna grab a short piece here and apply my glue. Get it out to the edge there. Okay. And get that in place. Great. And just keep on moving here. Grab my long piece. And smear that glue out to the edges. And get that glued into place. Okay, so we have here long, short, long, short. And just like we did with the first two tiers, you're gonna grab the little faux ribbon pieces, okay? And we're also gonna grab the embossing pieces and you're gonna get those glued into place. So there is where your ribbon goes. Okay, now this is kinda long, so I'm gonna need to move this. Can't see it in the frame, but there you go, just like that. Okay, just look for those little score marks to help with guiding you. Okay, just like that. And then, again, also, we've got the embossed pieces. Okay, there's four of the wider ones and four of the shorter ones. So you wanna go ahead and get those glued into place, making sure that you keep a nice even border all the way around so you can see one of the shorter ones one of the wider ones here just put all of these into place there's four of each so you've got two here two there two there and two there okay so you get those panels in place along with the full ribbons okay <clears throat> and we can go ahead and close this up once you have that in place go ahead and close up this box the base of the box. Okay. And I'm going to take my glue and smear it out. Now, it does help to kind of keep a, a wet rag around if you are using this technique where I'm using my fingers to spread out the glue. Otherwise, your fingers are going to get really sticky and cakey. So make sure you keep them clean as you work. Okay. All right, so that is good. And now this one does have a base to it. Okay, so let's take a look here. And I don't want that. I want these pieces here. Okay, so this is the bottom. It's gonna go on like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in place. These are nice fat tabs. And of course, as usual, go ahead and anchor just one of the sides first. Okay. Oops. All right. 
right? And then you can go ahead and put glue on the remaining tabs. And get that closed off. Okay. Just like that. And then you can flip this over, push down from the inside, and then there's also a liner piece that you can glue in there to kind of make that structure a little bit more um, solid. Okay, now what you can go ahead and do at this point is you can glue the ba uh, bottom base to the actual foam core base. So um, you can do spray glue if you want. I actually, all I did, since no one's really going to see it, is I just put glue on this little paper area here. And I just centered that. And just kind of let that sit and dry while I finish working on the rest of the box. Okay, so now we're working on the lid for the bottom. And we've already done this twice, so this shouldn't be anything new. But again, I want to go ahead and make sure that we alternate long and short, long and short, to ensure that we get this assembled correctly. Okay, and you'll see that the lid is labeled BL, B as in boy, or B as in bottom, L as in lid. Okay. So again, you want to alternate short and long. Okay, so go ahead and get that glued into place. Give it a few seconds to dry, and then just move on to the next one. Make sure you are correctly alternating. Okay. Just getting that glue out to the edge there and pushing down. There we go. Okay. There we go. Just making sure everything's aligned here. Just follow these lines. Do your best to get that perfectly aligned. And now we can go ahead and close this up on itself by putting glue on this little tab here. Okay. Just like that. And hold that until it dries. And now, just like we did with the first two lids, we are going to take and glue the reinforcement side up and in. Okay, just hold that in place until it dries. And do -si do over onto this one here. And to get that glued into place. Okay. All right. And same with this one. I guess I'm being very thorough with this box here and walking you through every step of the way here. Just to make sure that there are no questions. Okay. And the last one here. Just gonna put glue on this reinforcement piece, tuck it in, push it down, and then you can just kind of flatten out the whole thing. And voila. Okay. So we've got the main part of the lid assembled, and now we've got the top of it here. Okay. And you wanna grab the one that has the little score marks on it. Okay, so we're going to glue that down first. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put glue on this tab here just to get that one side anchored. And I want to get the glue out to the edge. 
Let's make sure that I've got a nice clean seam. You guys probably hear me say that so many times, but I think that's probably the most important part of all this is just making sure that things are aligned properly and that the paper is glued down as precisely as possible all the way out to the edge. Because you don't want it to look amateur. So as long as you follow these steps, I think you're gonna be very pleased with the outcome. Okay, so we've got the first part of that glued down and all we need to do is close it off. So again, nice line of glue and then let's go out to the edge, get a little out on the edge there and get your fingers working there. Just like that. Okay. And just close it down. Might have to kind of scooch things around a little bit. Just make sure you've got everything properly aligned. And then once it has that initial hold, you can flip it over and then push from the inside. And then we do have an additional reinforcement piece that we're just gonna glue inside there just to kind of make this piece uh, a little stronger. Because we are going to be gluing the next tier to this. And we want this to be nice and strong for us. Okay. All right. So there is our lid. And now we're basically ready to just finish this off. Okay, now I am going to take this. So this is this is our middle tier. Okay, and I'm gonna slide this through like so. Okay, and then these tabs here are gonna get glued down to the inside of that lid there. Okay, and what I did when I did this was I would put glue on this tab here. Okay, and then I would fold it over and I would put it on the edge of my table. Okay, let me see if I can kind of show you that. There you go. You see I'm kind of using the edge of my table to push that down and get it into place. That's going to result in a nice, nice clean seam there. Okay, so you can just rotate it over, put some glue down there, and then take the next tab and just push it down. Okay, I think you should be able to see that. I know it's not in the center of the frame there, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so you can see there how that looks. Okay, so we can just finish this off here. Just put glue on this tab and fold it over using the edge of my desk for leverage. Uh, flat, square, desk is probably better. Um, up in my library, I have uh, a rounded desk. It doesn't work as well. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fold that last piece over, just like that. Okay, so we're just gonna put our lid on like that. The top tier is gonna go like this. We've got our bottom tier here. You're just gonna pop that on top like so, okay. And now there are four of these pieces that we hadn't looked at yet and these go here. Okay, so you just wanna glue those down. I wanted to wait until this was in place before we did anything else. So you just glue that right there, okay, and one there, and one there, okay. So that's pretty much it for the box itself. And at this point, all that's really left is the floral. So 
let's go ahead and show you how we do the orchids and the uh, little foliage that goes with the orchids. Okay, so as you can see here, um, the actual orchids on the final box, um, there's three of them. They're different sizes, but as far as the assembly, they're completely identical. Um, and the foliage, if you just take a look at the video or the photo, you'll see where each piece goes. And I'll kind of show you, um, actually I, I should be able to show you on camera where and how we did all the pieces here. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the inking for the actual orchids. Okay, so we want to grab all the white pieces for the actual flowers and the petals. And then we have some of the little stamen pieces. Okay, and make sure I just get all of these so I can show you how this all works. And I'm just going to assemble one of the orchids because, again, all three of them are exactly identical. Okay, so first thing we want to do is um, we want to kind of get the correct size petals all together. Okay, so obviously the bigger ones go together. There's a mid size one, and then there's a small one, all the same. I'm gonna go ahead and work with the big one here. Okay, and grab that. That goes with this one and this one. And we've got the large one, the mid-sized one, and the small one. So again, you just wanna get yours kind of sorted like this with all these pieces, okay? And the process, again, is gonna be identical. So let's go ahead and just take a look at the large one. Now, um, inking obviously is optional, but I found it really helpful with the orchid to kind of give it a more realistic look. And what I did was I started off with some green, and I don't like using the ink pad directly on there because as you can see, I just flipped it over on accident and it laid down so much. So I've got this little, got this little pad here, and I'm grabbing some ink from the pad and what I'm doing is I'm kind of just rubbing off some of the ink, okay? I probably didn't need to put that much on, but I just wanna illustrate what's happening here. Now, the more you ink, the less you're gonna have left on your pad. And actually, the less pressure you put down, the more subtle it's gonna be, okay? So it's just about finding that happy medium and deciding you know, how bold you want it to be or, um, you know, how soft you want it to be. That's completely up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in the center of the flower, and I'm applying a very, very light pressure, and probably more pressure in the center, and then as you create larger circles, ease up on the pressure a little bit, okay? And now I'm just kind of focusing my efforts on one side Okay, so you see the gradient there and how it starts to slowly fade and dissipate as I go because I'm applying less pressure. Okay, so that's really the secret is just to kind of change up the pressure and make sure that you're, first off, not starting off with way too much ink to begin with. Unless, of course, you're looking for that look and you want that look, okay? So that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other part here. Just starting in the middle, applying a decent amount of pressure and then kind of gradually using less pressure as I work my way out so that it kind of slowly fades out. Okay, and then very subtle there towards the end. And I'm gonna grab the other corner here, get some yellow, and smear a little bit of that off. And you just kind of do like half circles and definitely blend some of that yellow with the existing green so it kind of creates a a yellow green color and 
just like that. It's real subtle. Okay. There we go. Not bad. I think I may have done a little bit better on <clears throat> my original ones, but that's okay. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and take this um, spice pumpkin color and just ink the outer edge of this guy here just to kind of make him a little more interesting. Okay. Some of these colors are more forgiving than others. And this one is definitely very forgiving. If you kind of go a little too crazy with the ink, it's still gonna look cool. And I actually used that same pumpkin spice color on these yellow pieces. And I'm sorry, I have glue all over my fingers, which is why they look kind of weird, but I'm sure you guys have been there. Okay, just getting that nice and inked, and that's it. So now it's just a matter of shaping this, okay? And what you wanna do is, uh, we actually have some score lines there to help you with the creasing. So go ahead and get that creased, okay, just like that. Crease that part, just like that. Okay, and then you wanna crease this away from you, just like that, okay? Kind of soften that up a little bit. Beautiful. And then I'm gonna grab your uh, dowel. If you have a dowel or a skewer uh, or something that you can take and you want to wrap this little corner around a dowel just to kind of flare it out like that. Okay, and you see the, see the interesting little shadow that that also creates. Okay, it kind of brings the whole thing to life. Okay, we're also gonna curl this little edge here. Just wrap it around your dowel. Actually, I'm using a hibachi skewer here. Okay, and then maybe uncurl that a little bit. And take your finger, look at all this ink. <laughs> take your finger and just kind of push down and wrap the paper around your finger a little bit. You can kind of grab it like this too. Kind of make it kind of bulge out a little bit like that. Okay, grab on the other side, doing the same thing. Just kind of shaping it around my finger. And there we go. Okay, so what we want to do then is Put some glue around that little oval there, okay? And that's gonna help kind of guide where things go. So just push and hold that. Now, once you get these two layers together, if you wanna kind of shape this even more, you can until you get it how you like it, but I'm pretty happy with how that looks, okay? Now this part here, I'm gonna go ahead and I want to actually position that right about here. And actually, before we do that, you wanna go ahead and take these two sides here and curl them around like so. Okay. And then take your finger, put it in the middle there and kind of bend that and make that kind of round as well. Okay. So it should kind of look like that. And then with these guys here, you can kind of curl these too. And then also kind of train them out like that. Okay, so we'll also what we want to do with this piece here is we want to take this little tip and curl that. Okay, so it kind of looks like that. Okay, and we are going to take and put a little bit of glue right there and glue that right there like that. Okay. 
I'll move that out of the way for a second. Bring these in. There's some score marks there. Okay, like that. Push that down. And then we're going to put glue on the back of this. And get that glued into place. Just like that. Okay. And once we have this all assembled, you can go ahead and put glue in this little section here. Okay. And you want these pieces here to be pretty much right here where these two petals join. Okay. So just like that. And just glue that down. Okay. So there's your beautiful orchid. Looks really nice. Probably could have done a little bit more green on the inking there, but I'm actually very happy with how that came out. Okay, so aside from that, um, we do have some of these floral pieces here, uh, or I should say like the foliage pieces. And um, I did do a little bit of inking on ours. So, you know, you can go ahead and grab your green just kind of ink the edges and if you want you can even do some shading on one of the sides just to kind of add a little bit of interest to the piece okay nevertheless um, all you want to do is find the parts where you have score marks and just fold and it kind of just gives them some dimension okay all of these actually have little score marks, so you want to go ahead and fold them on the score marks. And then these pieces here, um, these two pieces here, they kind of go on top of each other. Okay, so you want to glue this so that you see how there's two layers there. And then let me show you something real quick here. I'm just going to go ahead and ink this piece. Um, inking on this one is probably recommended because it's going to help stand out from that back layer. Okay, so let's just throw a little ink on there. Actually, let me grab my pad. It's a lot easier to work with. Let me get a little bit more on there. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to glue this together just kind of following this stem here. Now you see how that really makes it pop from that background layer. Okay, so I actually pop dotted this back here just to kind of, so that it's not flat. You can see here on my final version that I've got that pop dotted. Um, so really at this point, all that's left to do is take and, and probably with the help of some pop dots, just arrange these however you want behind the orchid okay so like for example this piece here goes with this piece here okay and then we have uh, let's see yeah this piece here just kind of and I just used a pop dot to kind of hold these all in place while I worked on um, kind of arranging these so if you just look at the photo on the website you should be able to sort of decipher how I arranged it, okay, and it's kind of something like that. So I would pop dot that to these green leaves, okay, and then you would put your orchid right on there and just pop dot the whole thing onto um, the side there, okay. And then for the middle layer, for the, the second tier, as you can see here, the second tier is made up of these leaves here. Okay, and then you can just grab two of these little grassy elements and just kind of pop dot those however you want, okay, to the back side of that, okay, and then put your flower on there and just attach that, which then just leaves these, this foliage element, okay, with these little grasses. Okay, so these are going to be pointing down. You got your grasses there. You put your flower on there, and that's going to go on the top tier, which you can see here. Okay, 
And also, another thing you can do with these grasses is just kind of curl them to give them some interest. And I actually did a little bit of light um, inking on these as well. Okay, so can't wait to see your version. And I'm sure it's gonna look awesome. Now, one other thing that I do wanna point out uh, as far as our project goes, um, Ron actually sent us some of this bling that comes on like this mesh. Um, and it's pretty cool. Let me see if I can find it here. Yep, here it is. Okay, so you've got this mesh here. And so what I did was I just cut two rows or two columns, I guess, and just hot glued it to the outside of the faux little ribbon. Um, and then one little strip along the top of the base as well to really just finish this thing off and, and make it look really, really spectacular. Um, so that was done with hot glue. I tried gluing it, but that didn't work very well. So you definitely want to hot glue that. And um, that's pretty much it for the cake box. Um, I can't wait to see your version and what you guys end up um, doing with it. So, you know, if you do uh, make this thing, I would love to see a photo of it on our Facebook page. So thank you again for joining me and I will see you next time. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.